Cape Cod represented a different kind of natural environment. It was unsort of uh, corrupted. No great buildings, no expanses of asphalt, just sand and dunes, light that was very distinctive and beautiful. In the first four years of the 30s, the Hoppers were known as a couple that lived in a shack and the guy painted. There's a wonderful story about him going up to someone in the neighborhood asking them if he could paint their house and they said, how much do you want for it? Thinking that he wanted to put paint on the house <laughs> instead of put paint on a canvas of the house. He wasn't jovial. He wasn't what we would call garrulous and loquacious. So difficult to get to know. But that really doesn't translate when you look at the beauty and the joy and the color that he used in his palette here on the Cape. And it was amazingly prolific for Edward, who did over 30 paintings within one square mile. When Hopper painted Marshall's house in 1932, he was absolutely at the top of his game. It's a very simple watercolor, and boy, does it have a lot to say. You look and you feel, I like that, I could be there. That's what he does for me in Marshall's house. My family first came in contact with what we now call Marshall's house in 1913. The items in the house and around the house tell the story of the home. I believe that Marshall's house is what Hopper was best at, and that is painting light on the side of a building. Hopper famously said that what he liked to do was paint sunlight on the side of a house. He said that as if it were a simple thing, and it's not a simple thing. I've been able to hold this watercolor in my hands, unframed and unmatted, and look at his brushwork and the techniques that he's using in the foreground, scratching out the paper to make those dry grasses. You can feel the heads of the, of the grass stalk just crumbling in your fingers from the dryness. Taking some sharp instrument and scraping tiny little lines down to the white of the paper. The sad thing about Hopper to me is that painting for him was almost painful. He talked about how there was this disappointing deterioration from the idea in his mind to what happened when he put that idea on canvas. For him, what he was able to achieve was so much less than what he conceived. History will call his Truro period his most prolific and perhaps his best. I feel that Marshall's house is Hopper's doing what he liked to do best, the best. I think that Hopper was attracted to Marshall's house because it was right there. It was an easy spot that he had probably driven by many times, probably early in the morning when he saw the light the first time, he took something that was relatively common and gave it a look and feel that wasn't so common. Hopper painted the outside of the house, and it's beautiful. But he missed the truly good side of the house, and that's the inside. Each room is so filled with the lives that have 
been here for five generations. Five generations of family. I'm very proud to have lived in this little house by the side of the road. There is something fundamental about the experience of the place itself. It's very revealing to be able to see that actual source. It's, it's, it's there at Marshall's house in a wonderful way. Thank you.